A trip to a Disney park can be awesome, or truthfully, not so awesome. However, a lot of the day's outcome can depend on the choices you make. In this video, we're gonna share our challenging day at Disney's Hollywood Studios and show you how our day, which started out pretty tough, actually turned out to be pretty good in the end. Hey, welcome to Fitness and Beer, and yes, we're back at it again. This time, we're at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So, we're checking out the standard parking, quick $25, and hey, if you get here early in the morning, they park you like next to people and everyone's jumping out the car at the same time. So, be careful out there. All right, let's go. We arrived at about 8 a.m., a half an hour before the park opened. Hey guys, it's about 8.20, and so we're waiting to get into Hollywood Studios. So if you ever watch this channel, you know I have some bones to pick with Disney parks because I often feel that they're overpriced and overcrowded. Nevertheless, here we are doing it today for the kids. So our daughters are five and eight years old, and we're here before the park even opens. Let's see what we can make of this park day. Let's go. We'd gotten our reservation to the park just the day before, so we hadn't had an opportunity to do much research other than looking at the rides that the park had to offer. Okay, so we've gotten through the gate, we're in the park, and we didn't really have a plan starting off, but we just figured out, got a map in our hand, and just figured out we're gonna head to Slinky Dog Dash to start our day. And uh, right now, because it took a while, the ticket booth, was not the fastest. It's already 8.47, so we've been here for almost an hour, but just getting into the park. We're at our first ride of the day and not off to a great start. So we got here before the rope dropped, got into the park as quickly as we could and picked out our first ride and it's already an 80 minute wait to start off the day. After going back and forth for a minute or two and allowing about 20 more people to get in line in front of us, we decided to wait it out. The wait was made better by the cool Disney decor and theming all around. There was always something neat to look at. And finally, we found ourselves on deck. Looks like our ride is here. First ride of the day, we finally made it. Yay! Real talk, Slinky Dog Dash Coaster gets up and has just the right amount of thrills where it's not too much for small kids, but still exciting enough for adults. just finished our first ride, which was the Slinky Dog Dash. It took us about 80 minutes, but I gotta say, the ride was longer than I actually thought it would yeah. be. And ah, was it almost worth the wait? Maybe worth the wait. We got here at opening and it's already 10 a.m. and we're just completing our first ride. The park opened at 8.30. However, we didn't really reap the benefits of getting here as early as we did because you have to go through the ticket line after the park opens unlike epcot where you check your ticket and then you sit and wait till the rope drops and then you can dash to where you want to go unfortunately here when the rope drops you still have to make it past the ticket booth which took us another almost 20 minutes and allowed the park to fill up in that kind of time frame so getting here for the absolute ropes drop i, I don't know if it's worth it yeah. After we caught a quick glimpse of Jessie the Cowgirl okay, and Sarge from the Toy Story movies, then we headed over to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, where we expected to tackle our second significant wait of the day. Little did we know, this wouldn't exactly go as planned. So, we're waiting in line for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Train, just for our second ride of the day and unfortunately the ride is broken and everyone has to sit and wait. So yeah, it's a little bit of a drag and not really the best start to a Disney day, but we're gonna keep our head up and see if it can get better. 
Once the ride was up and running again, they escorted us into a theater where they screened a film short that would end in a neat little gag that I won't spoil here. And finally, we were in the home stretch before the ride. Here's a few glimpses from inside the ride. We all enjoyed the ride and thought overall it was a pretty cool experience, with a few surprises in store. Ooh wee! So we've been in the park for just under three hours, and so far we've done just two things, although there were a couple of the marquee rides, and so we're happy that we got those in. Not off to a great start because when we were waiting on our second line, the ride actually broke and then we ended up waiting like an extra 45 minutes on top of the 80 minutes that we had already waited in line. So it's been a rough start, but again, like I said, we're gonna keep our head up and we're gonna keep it moving. You got anything to say, kid? The ride we went on was so awesome. The ride we went on was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, by the way. And I will admit, Mickey and Minnie's Railway Runaway or whatever it is, is actually a pretty cool ride. Don't know if it's worth an 80 minute wait, but still cool. Next, we headed over to Star Tours where both the theming and world building were spectacular. On the way into the ride, it feels like you've really stepped into the world of Star Wars and the animatronics are top notch. Hey, that's one kind of town certainly avoid. After Star Tours, it was pertinent that we stop by the Oasis Canteen, where there was no line and we grabbed a quick beverage. Okay, so we've been in the park for almost exactly four hours and we've done exactly three things. Um, and we stopped by the cantina to get a little libation right here. And, and I gotta say, the three activities that we have actually been able to get to are all kind of marquee activities. So we spent a lot of time waiting in line, but each activity was really cool. Now, worth the amount of time that we spent in line? No but still pretty cool activities. Next, we headed into the Frozen show and it did not disappoint. The entertainment value along with the acting, writing, and singing, again, were all top notch. I've been going to night school. It was a great opportunity to catch some air conditioning and the ending was pretty chill, literally. Hey, I can't believe I'm saying this again, but one of the things I've noticed in theme parks is so much cutting. What people often seem to do is part of the party goes and gets in line while the other part of the party goes to either go to the bathroom or goes to get something to eat or drink and then they want to catch up to their people in line. Guys, that is still cutting. I'm sorry to inform you and really the parks need to crack down on this activity. The fair thing to do is if you want to ride with your entire party is that you guys all wait in the entrance till everybody can gather and then proceed to get in line instead of cutting in front of 100 or 200 people. Come on now. The family went over to Muppet Vision 3D while I found my way over to the tune-in lounge where I hung out in the AC and found us dining reservations. Okay, so I had to succumb to the pressures of Disney World and right now I'm hanging out at the tune-in bar. Staff has been great and, well, I'm gonna wait for the family. We found our reservation for dining at the Brown Derby. This place looked nice and had a bit of an upscale atmosphere. But considering the time involved with dining here, I had a few thoughts. had our dinner slash lunch or our only meal of the day at the Brown Derby. It's a fancier place and I would love to tell you that it was good. We had the Cobb salads and the kids, I, I, I would say pass, um, especially for the price. It's now 530. 
we've been in the park since 8 30 so we're looking at nine hours and up to this point in time we've done like three rides four if you include the ride that they went on without me and a show and that's it however even though this has been a tough disney day we're still after it we're gonna keep going and we're gonna see what else we can get into let's do it now when mickey and minnie's railway shut down we were too far back in line to receive automatic lightning lane passes but the cast member on duty suggested going to guest services so eventually we did okay so here we are at the guest relations center to see if we can get some compensation for our earlier mishap let's see how this goes because we really need to make something good out of this trip and make something good we did big thanks to guest services we were compensated with two lightning lane passes one of which we used for star wars rise of the resistance lightning passes make all the difference in the disney park and two go a long long way this is now added to the system your outpost or bottom is no longer safe now, I'm going to share a few scenes from The Rise of the Resistance, but not enough to spoil it. However, if you don't want to see anything more, jump ahead to the 1152 mark. Okay, so we did it. We had a chance to get on Ride of the Resistance. It was about a 10 minute wait for us. So we kind of lucked out with the breaking down of the Minnie and Mickey train and had an opportunity to do the Rise of the Resistance, which I think is a pretty cool ride. Currently the wait is 150 minutes. Is it worth 150 minutes? I, I, oh, no, it's not. Like, uh, but still a cool experience. And suddenly this day has gotten to be decent. Not great, but decent. Let's move on. We used our second lightning lane on Toy Story Mania. And this was pretty fun too. Hey guys, I want to give you a heads up. If you're planning a Disney trip, do exactly that. Plan the trip. Don't be like us today and just kind of show up. I, I'm not gonna say that that never works. However, if you wanna make the most out of your experience, making plans really helps with Disney. Booking reservations, booking passes to the specific rides that you wanna take, all of this will help make your experience better. So yeah, let's move on. And a big part of that planning is figuring out how and making sure to access Disney's lightning lanes. And for us, it was time for souvenirs. Okay, so we just hopped on Toy Story Mania to use our last lightning pass. Um, definitely worthwhile, especially without a wait. And uh, overall, it's been a really interesting day. So as you know, a Disney park can kind of suck or it could be a really awesome experience because I can't take this away from them. The quality of the activities here is actually excellent. The only problem is that sometimes the weights and the amount of time that you spend in actual activities is just so out of balance that it can make for an unpleasant day. So my suggestion to you is plan, plan, plan. Thanks a bunch for watching. Until the next one, fitness and beer. Feels so true, feels so true. You put me crazy like no one else.